Doug, we want to start with, we saw what Drake May did in the preseason finale against Commanders. Was making all the throws, showing off his athleticism, working with a bad offensive line, but executing and just looking confident. But everything we hear from Gerard Mayo, it sounds like he's still indecisive on who will be the starting quarterback. And he says Drake May sounds like is ready to be an NFL quarterback, but he's not ready to say he's QB1. How do you read the situation that's going on down at Gillette Stadium of Drake May is showing he can actually execute at an NFL level, but Gerard Mayo and his group, Elliot Wolf, Alex Van Pelt, sound undecided if they want him to start yet? Yeah, a lot of mixed messaging coming out of Gillette Stadium, out, of, out from the Patriots, and honestly, even just from Gerard Mayo in the last 24 hours or so, uh, as of Sunday night, he was referring to Drake May as the Patriots' second best quarterback. And then as of Monday morning, he's saying, well, actually, Drake May is outplaying Jacoby Brissett. So they've taken this really conservative approach with Drake May since the spring when he was third string behind Bailey Zappi. Since the start of the summer, we still haven't seen him take it any first team reps in training camp. No first team reps in the preseason. So it really feels like the Patriots are going to roll with Jacoby Brissett and continue that conservative approach to Drake May's development. Uh, but May really is forcing the issue right now. I think the turning point was really August 13th. That was the joint practice with the Eagles that he really started playing better than Jacoby Brissett. And it's been pretty consistent since that point. Still though, with so much uncertainty on the offensive line, really only one spot right there is settled right now with center David Andrews. It probably is the smart move to go with Jacoby Brissett. I just don't know if the Patriots want to admit that the offensive line is what's holding Drake May back from starting at this point. Yeah, we'll get into the offensive line for sure, but I want to stay with the Drake May, Jacoby Brissett conversation. But this is more of a question regarding the coaching staff and Gerard Mayo, and he talked about mixed messaging coming out of Foxborough. Well, I'm sure the media appreciates the transparency of Gerard Mayo after two decades of not knowing what was going on with Bill Belichick. But at the same time, is it almost like he's sharing a little bit too much, uh, too much sort of stream of consciousness with the media because – Again, that is mixed messaging. You don't really know where either quarterback stands going into the regular season. I think what it really boils down to is inexperience on Gerard Mayo's part. Like he really seemed to be taken by surprise by a question last night from Phil Perry that, like, okay, if Jacoby Brissett is hurt because he injured his shoulder on Sunday night, if Jacoby Brissett is hurt, would you start Drake May? And that's when... You know, Gerard Mayo seemed to get a little bit flustered by and said, well, he's our second best quarterback, but I'm not prepared to answer that question. That's something where Bill Belichick, you know, for the media, we wouldn't have really appreciated this, but he's more experienced. He would have said, I don't deal in hypotheticals. We'll get to that situation uh, when it comes to us. Uh, but I, I, I do think it's just simply inexperience on Gerard Mayo's part. I think he'll get more comfortable with all of these situations as he becomes more accustomed to being a head coach. But for a Patriots fan right now, you just don't really know what to think because your eyes are telling you that Drake May is better than Jacoby Brissett. Gerard Mayo is sometimes saying that Drake May is better than Joey Brissett. Then you have to sit there and wonder like, okay, then why isn't this guy starting? This is who we're excited about. This is the future of the franchise. Yeah, I think it's the best way to put it. That goes back to him talking about burning cash after he got the job and they didn't do it, kind of getting ahead of his skis. And Doug, you mentioned it. He had the postgame presser after the preseason finale. He had his Monday morning radio call-in presser. He had the Monday morning press conference with the beat reporter such as yourself. On that radio show, he also said at this current point, Drake has outplayed Jacoby, but we have to take in the full body of work going back to spring and training camp. It's not to say that he's lying or anything and it could be he's saying too much and being too transparent but how do you read that where he's admitting right now drake has outplayed jacoby as you said since mid-august but then he's bringing up full body of work talking about stuff in the spring and before the pads came on in training camp yeah i think that that's really just another way of justifying starting jacoby Brissett at this point and you know it is somewhat fair because obviously we're not getting a full picture of what Jacoby Brissett is based on the snaps that he has received in, in preseason. Drake May has just had more opportunities to throw the ball, more opportunities uh, to use his legs, to make plays. And so Gerard Mayo has said in the past that he values practice more than preseason games. So in the whole, Drake May has definitely outperformed Jacoby Brissett in the preseason. I'm sure if Jacoby Brissett, I'm sure if uh, Gerard Mayo and Alex Van Pelt 
look at that totality, look at all the practices, look at the spring, look at the summer. They can still convince themselves that Jacoby Brissett has been the better quarterback since, let's say, like April or May. But it does feel like the present, which is when Drake May is outperforming Jacoby Brissett, probably should be a little bit more important. At the same time, like you said, Adam, we'll get to the offensive line in a little bit here, but I don't blame them if they don't want to start Drake May behind the starting offensive line right now because they don't know who those players are going to be. They can't trust them to line up right. They're running into each other. Our pets' heads are falling off. Everything's (laughs) going on there. Um, But uh, So I don't blame them for sitting Drake May through the start of the season. But uh, like you either go full transparency and say that or you take the Bill Belichick approach and don't say anything and just let the decision speak for itself. Where does Drake Ray, Drake May stand with you right now in, in terms of his development? You know, you go into training camp, you sort of estimate like, all right, I'll think, I think he'll be at this point in his development at this time of the year. Where is he at on the Doug Kide scale uh, compared to you know what you projected to where he is right now? Yeah, I, after he was drafted, uh, I spoke to some people around the team who said like, don't be surprised if this guy starts right away. If he if he is the week one starter for us, then in the beginning part of training camp, I really do think that he was struggling out there. Um, I was like, I, at that point, I was ready to say like, all right, let Jacoby Brissett start the whole season. He's on a one year contract. Then you get a fresh, fresh restart in 2025, start Drake May then. Right now, though, I'm extremely impressed with Drake May. I think that he's proven himself to be a gamer. I don't think that those 11-on-11 workouts in training camp are the best way to see how Drake May is developing because he can use his legs. He is good at rolling out of the pocket. We saw it multiple times yesterday. Uh, His arm strength flashes more in games. He delivered that 48-yard pass to K.J. Osborne that was nullified because of a penalty, but that would have been a touchdown with a throw on the move. So I think that he does work better when he is out of pocket, uh, when he can move around a little bit more and freelance a little bit more. So overall, I think he is ready to play week one. But (laughs) that's under a normal circumstance where the Patriots know where more than one of their starting offensive line is playing in week one. Yeah, is this a unit, and you mentioned of why we saw the unit we saw yesterday. Like, Vidarian Lowe goes down, that's why Chuk Sakura for was at left tackle. City So went down, didn't return to the game, and was ruled out right away, which is never a good sign. Is this an offensive line that is anywhere close to being what Patriots fans and what we may see come out week one? Because you speak about it, and I agree, there's the situation. You need to have five guys you can trust to keep Drake May upright and not digress into the raw prospect he was coming out of UNC. But is this offensive line even close to being a final product that they can trust with Jacoby Brissett, let alone their rookie number three overall pick? Not really at this point, because what we saw last night was, yeah, Chooks Okorafor at left tackle, City So at left guard, Nick Leverett at center, uh, Layden Robinson at right guard, and Michael Wanu at right tackle. When the season starts in week one, none of those guys might be in those positions. So they almost have to use the, the start of the season as an extended preseason to continue to figure out the starting offensive line, because Okorafor could move from left tackle to right tackle, so injured his ankle, he could be out. Nick Leverett not going to be the starting center. It's going to be David Andrews. Layden Robinson struggled with penalties. He might not be the right guard. Michael Weno might move over to right guard, and they might have Vidarian Lowe at left tackle if he's healthy. So like, this was their last chance to see what a starting offensive line could look like. And two weeks later, they might have to reshuffle the entire thing. And they wanted to settle the offensive line after week two of the preseason that's what Gerard mayo said that's what their timeline was that's what the you know that that's what they were trying to hit as a deadline it didn't happen and things can change but it's tough to be going in a third preseason game with a starting offensive line that could be completely reshuffled by week one because you still there's no guarantee now at this point that whatever they do try out there at week one is going to be you know they're they're going to be able to work together they're going to that those are the right pieces in place and everything like that so yeah, I mean, it's it's honestly not a great offensive line for Jacoby Brissett to be working with either. Jacoby Brissett is just so much more experienced that you'd rather have to have him suffer behind that offensive line than Drake May, whose development that you could ruin behind a group like that.